Welcome back to the Boys of Summer Podcast. I'm Jeremy, here with Mac Attack, Mac Sheridan. Yo, guys. Today we are talking about the legend. The man. Bill Murray. Bill fucking Murray. I've been waiting to do this one. Bill Murray has impacted my childhood through up and adulthood with his roles and movies. Without a shadow of doubt, I can say Bill Murray was the first celebrity that I was even aware of. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Right there. Two, three-year-old little bit kid Mac. What do you think he played with? Uh, proton pack. Well, okay. My friend had the proton pack. I had the trap. <laughs> but we had, go- we had Ghostbusters. You had the Ghostbusters toys. Yeah. You had the Ghostbusters cereal. All that fun all stuff. All those Um, We're going to dive in today and see where Bill came from. Now... Early on in his career, he was radio host, talk show, whatever it's called. So back in Chicago, Dan Aykroyd, Gilda Radner, and Bill Murray were running this TV show, or radio show, mm-hmm. sorry guys, <clears throat> running this radio show, and they got uh, talented. They got picked got up, notoriety. and Dan Aykroyd and Gilda Radner went to start a little show in New York called Saturday Night Live. Okay. Now, Bill Murray did not go with them. He is not a ri- part of the original cast. Really? I thought he was part of the original a cast. A lot of people do. Okay. Bill went on a show called Saturday Night Live with Howard Cosell. And I guess this is just them two sitting there talking to each other. I've not well, seen it. Obviously, it did not become a cultural icon, and I didn't even know it existed. That is correct. So I'm guessing it didn't last long. It did not last long. It lasted about two seasons, and then Bill Murray went to SNL. Okay. So he was there pretty early on. Yeah, he was there in, in the first, he's in like third season. season. Three, yeah. uh, and then he, people really started to know who he was through the skits with Steve Martin and uh, well, Eddie his, Murphy's. Uh, weekend and, updates. And- yeah, the weekend updates and all that. And... He became him. Yeah. Sort of that. Like can, we all finally knew. That's where we fought, first meet Bill Murray is on Saturday Night Live. That's where the world is first like, hi, Bill. And Bill's like, hi, world. I'm going to yeah. do some funny stuff for you. I'm just going to act a fool and be crazy. Yeah. Does it better than anybody. Dude, does great. I and mean, he did that for a couple of years there, right? A few years. Uh, then he hit uh, a, great, a great movie called Meatballs. But then... The 80s, 1980, right off the bat, we have a comedy classic that I think we can both agree, one of our favorite movies, Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Like, I love Caddyshack. Everybody can find part of Caddyshack that's really funny. And actually, I was just listening to a podcast, and they mentioned this, and this is really, I love this. If it weren't for guys like Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, and Rodney Dangerfield in that movie... It'd just be a lame teen dramedy about growing up. I agree. I want to throw Ted Knight in with that. Yes. Good call. Good call. Ted Knight's got to be there. The role he played for a comedian? Oh, oh, I felt like he was that old grumpy man. It, it, he, You could tell they were enjoying themselves. Oh, they had a blast on that. I agree. Uh, he also played Hunter S. Thompson. Yes. In 1980. 1980. Where the Buffalo Roam, uh, for Hunter S. Thompson fans, I'm sure you all know the movie uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas with uh, that dude, what's his face? Johnny Depp. Yeah, that young guy, that upstart, Johnny Depp, yep. Yeah, that's... He'll, he'll I, become famous one day. Anyways, so, <laughs> that everybody knows Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, and it's Hunter S. Thompson and his buddy Laszlo, who in that movie was played by... Del Toro? Benicio Del Toro. Yeah. And so in Where the Buffalo Roam, that character is actually played by Peter Boyle. Oh, really? Really. And I got to say, I I know a lot of people agree with me. Hunter S. Thompson, Johnny Depp did play the Hunter S. Thompson a better role. Okay. Believe me, Bill Murray did it. He became Hunter S. Thompson. But not like Johnny Depp did. Okay. But Peter Boyle's Laszlo? Oh my god. Just I don't see Peter Boyle doing that. 
I'm afraid of Peter Boyle after that movie. If you don't know who Peter Boyle is, everybody loves Raymond. He was the father. Or he was the crazy, uh, the second crazy guy on Taxi. He was also uh, <laughs> Taxi the driver. monster in Young Frankenstein. He was. Correct. So a lot of big credits to uh, his name, Peter actually. Boyle, he was an amazing actor. Uh, but yeah, so for those of you who are really in, liked Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and haven't seen Where the Buffalo Roam, go fucking see it. <laughs> So we're coming off that, and we hit my dad's favorite movie. Everybody's dad's favorite movie. Stripes. Stripes. I didn't want to watch it. I was forced to watch this movie, and I loved it. My dad put it on, too. I, you know. Harold Ramis with the afro going on, <laughs> the glasses, and just, it made no sense. I mean, it was hilarious. You know, that movie, basically, when I watched the, the opening scene, especially... When they, you know, he gets fired and they're hanging out in his apartment and all that. Oh, he's begging his girl to stay. Yeah. And then they're just like, I love when Harold Ramis, he's like, goes and reaches in, like, can I drink your last beer? I'm like, no, I'll split it with you then. And then he just cracks <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> the man's on his last leg, you drink uh, his last beer. Yeah. Just, <laughs> we'll split it. I think he said it. <laughs> yeah, like, only like your bro could do that to you. And, like, I felt that because they were such good friends, you know? Oh, I, yeah. You, I just felt it, and I loved it, and I just fell in love with that movie right then and there. No, oh, it's it's hilarious. It makes yeah. no sense. The movie's almost two fucking movies. Yeah, because they go, it's kind of like Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. You got the basic, and then they go off. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen Stripes, they go fuck yourselves. Going to end the Ghostbusters hit. We're not going to talk about Ghostbusters uh, a lot if you... You know we love it. It's a cultural phenomenon. I just told you how my first toys as a little baby kid was Ghostbuster toys. So, you know, if you want to hear us talk more about it, go listen to our episode about Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, we dove in deep on both on both sequels. Uh, well, yeah, both movies. That's his baby, and you know that that really should be focused. Aykroyd right wrote it. Yeah, and don't, and, and like Bill Murray wasn't even the first part, first choice for Peter Venkman. Correct. John Belushi. John Belushi. That was meant for him. We're coming up. He got a little part in Little Shop of Horrors, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite, funniest little... Him and Steve Martin. It, it's one of my favorite scenes I, I believe I've ever watched. Yep. I mean, he just... He's in a dentist office begging for pain, and Steve Martin gets fucking pissed because he can't hurt him. And <laughs> they played that wonderfully. I thought that was great. Yep. Then we go Scrooged. I love Scrooge. I watch Scrooge every Christmas. Who doesn't? My favorite Christmas movie. You have to be. Just I love the movie poster of like this like he's has this he's getting the cigar lit and the skeleton hand. And he's like, Argh. Yeah. Ah. That's Such just like asshole. I just look at that and I'm like, I wanna watch that movie. Yeah, I and the that. fact that they're making like a live TV movie, like in the movie, I love when they make a movie or TV show in the movie. I don't know why. Trying to keep, yeah, layers. I don't know. It's just oh. fun. It's a good movie. I love it every Christmas. Um, and and of some course, of my favorite lines. Got Ghostbusters too. Which one? Like Niagara Falls. Oh, like Niagara Falls. Frankie Angel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> when he sees his mother. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Niagara Falls. <sighs> Oh, you know what the price of veal was? Yeah. <laughs> um, what would you say was your favorite role that he played in the 1980s? In the 80s? In the 80s. Just the 80s. I'm going to have to go with his role in Stripes. As John. As John. <laughs> I, I love that movie. He was funny. That's like one of those like... Anytime it's on movies, like you flip the chance, like stripes is on. Well, psh, throw that remote to the side. You're not gonna uh, need I, that for a couple hours. I love when the the sergeant's asking for leaders, and he steps up like he's gonna be able to do it. <laughs> and you know he's just gonna fail. Yeah, he's like, I hear you. I, I'll take care of it. No, you're not. And you know he already hates him. Yeah, it's fucking great. Uh, it's hard for me to go against Ghostbusters and Peter Venkman. Sure. I mean, uh, I still watch that role to the stat. Uh, and I like that role. Yeah. Everybody else done great. But without Peter Bateman, there's no Ghostbusters. 
You know, and it, I gotta agree that, you know, he really wasn't even meant to be in it, but he fucking killed it. He killed it. And, he, yeah, there's nothing else you can say about that. Now's where he's getting ready to hit his little four movie block of stardom to end his stardom career. This is like the eighties he got he lit up and now he's on fire. He's on fire. And I I thought it would last longer. I agree, but I think it was an in, it's an intense heat and I think we talked about that and I'm I'm sure we're gonna talk about it a little bit more. Of course. But what we're seeing here is Bill Murray going from a comedian and a and movie star Skip. to becoming a cultural phenomenon. You're not wrong. I think by the time he does hit Quick Change, What About Bob, Groundhog Day, and I, it, it's something to say, I think Groundhog Day was the cherry on top. Dude, that movie changed his career. I, I, I believe it did too. You know, and then it, it took him a long time to admit it, but even he has said, all of a sudden he was an actor with range, instead of just being a comedian. Not, man, he hated it for years. Sure. Hated the way the movie was done, blah, blah, blah. But then came out and said, it's a masterpiece. It's Changed it. It was great. Yeah. And Bad Dog and Glory, where he's with De Niro, and I mean, blah, 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 yeah. was great. That four block was... His top. Yeah, and then we like, see him starting to go back. Yeah, this is all gold. So, early 90s is pure gold for him. Agreed. And then we start getting to uh, some supporting actors. Kingpin, Ernie McCracken. Definitely not the starting role. You know, Woody some, Harrelson and... Um, Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid were really kind of the main characters of that movie. Uh, but the, he, he was good in it. But he was definitely like... It, you could feel the step back. Well, he was a supporting actor. Yeah. But I feel he carried it to a point. I agree. From I, Woody. That whole op- the whole opening of the movie, he's carrying. The first, like, 20 minutes of the movie. Yeah, he's a star. Yeah. And he's not supposed to be. And I think Woody House took a step back, personally. I, uh, yeah, I just... That's a slitty. I, I kind of feel the same way. I, I think... And I know they're friends in real life, and I don't know what their natural dynamic is, but... I almost feel like, yeah, he was just like, like, what do I do next, Bill? Yeah, he, like, was, he was taking the In point. the scenes, you know? You could just feel him, like, what, taking the cues off him. I agree. And that made it for a great movie. We hit Space Jam, he plays his own self. He plays himself. Like, that's when you know you've made it, when you're playing yourself. Then we hit these, you know, wild things. He was the lawyer at the end. Well, Rushmore, which I... Don't get at all. Okay, so Rushmore is like... <sighs> oh, please explain this piece of shit to me right. that everybody seems to love. I don't get it. No. So it, it it's like one of those things where it's the thing you love before it becomes the thing you love. You know what I'm saying? Like when one of your favorite filmmakers is like has a great series and then you realize that there was a movie they made before they became famous. Yes. It was Wes Anderson, and you can just plainly see he's just still figuring out how to make movies. No doubt. It's elementary almost. It, but it has a cult following. It does. It's a fucking weird movie. I don't get that. Because fucking weird movies have cult followings. Uh, yeah. You might not be wrong. Then he hits the 2000s. And he comes in screaming. With Hamlet? With Hamlet. What the hell is he thinking there? But anyway. Like we all saw it. (laughs) Don't even lie. Don't even pretend. (laughs) But then, Charlie's Angels. Another huge movie for the time. I remember this movie was big when it came out. Well, it had all the action effects. And you had the three leading ladies coming in. And big name stars on that list. Lucy Liu, Drew Barrymore, and Cameron Diaz. They were wide hot there. They were the perfect three to cast at that time. I agree. And you had a great villain in Sam Rockwell, who is way too good of an actor to even be in that movie. When's that man going to get the the credit he deserves? He's the people's champ. Oh, my God. Sam, I've never seen him play a bad role. Never. 
We're going to talk about him or something. Oh, we're going to have to. I love Sam Rockwell. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, the Bosley character, I think you think that was perfect for him, right? I did. Uh, I thought he was great in it. It was just kind of a, a, almost an example of what I was just saying where he became a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. Where, like, it was really just Bill Murray just doing these funny scenes every once in a while. Well, you I know, think it, it kind of intersected throughout the movie. Agree. And he had a quote that says, <laughs> it's a funny quote, the reason I like acting because I only have to be good 90 seconds at a time. <laughs> Dude, that quote <laughs> so kind of just scene, fits that scene, movie right there. Scene, 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 done. Yeah, because his scenes aren't very long, and he's not in it very much. And, of course, they didn't... I, I, obviously, they didn't like him very much because they replaced him with Bernie Mac in the sequel, but... Oh, Bernie. Oh, I Bernie. miss Bernie. We all miss Bernie. We're going to hit the rule Tenenbaums next in 2001. Yep. Um, I know a lot of people hate this movie. I think you're included. Ah, uh, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I'm one of those. It's a weird fucking movie. Uh, I'll give you that. But here's the thing. It's the first time Wes Anderson really like just laid out his style. And he's like, this is my style. Fuck you guys. This is how I want my actors to act. This is how I want my sets to look. This is how my designs look. And, you know, he, he really put it together really well. And... Bill Murray just being this dry character was just so fun. And it was, yeah, it was a great movie. Kudos to him for doing it his way. I love Wes Anderson movies. The South sucks. Moonrise Kingdom is like one of my favorite movies. I've never time. heard of it, and that tell you enough. No, it's wonderful. Fuck it. Anyways. So, Roll Tenable. Had a great cast, though. Wonderful cast. I will say that. It right. had a wonderful cast. I just didn't like how they were used. But again, you just don't like the style. Well, you've mentioned before you either like him or you hate him. Wes Anderson. Yep. I hate Wes Anderson. I'm getting a T-shirt. <laughs> Dude, we should make a T-shirt like that. I hate Wes Anderson. <laughs> the Boys of Summer. I hate Wes Anderson. You can have one that says I love Wes Anderson. <laughs> People can decide who they who like. And we can see by T-shirt sales who who loves and doesn't love Wes Anderson. <laughs> I like that idea. What do you guys think? That's kind of fun. <laughs> Someone should just design some t-shirts for us and submit them to us. Yeah, we'll wear them. Yeah. Well, if you get the right size. <laughs> <laughs> Got a guess, though. Got a, oh, shit. I'm trying. Thank uh, Gabriel Iglesias. <laughs> All right. I hate to do this guy, to you guys, but we are going to have to talk about one of the worst movies cinema's ever put out. No, I have to say there's been worse. Is that Wes Anderson too? No, it's Sofia Coppola. Sofia Coppola. Uh, oh. but it's definitely like her first fucking movie. We're talking about Lost in Translation if you haven't picked up on that yet. Uh, if you've not seen it, save yourself. Please don't. It's kind of like... Uh, you uh, know, I love like movies and I like I like the whole making a movie. I could get really nerd out on how movies are made in, in fact. But... I didn't like it. <laughs> like I wanted to like it. And I was like, yeah, Bill Murray in this dramatic role, and you know, he was fine. And they had some blonde woman starring in it. I don't know. I bet she didn't amount to anything, and probably didn't become famous after that. But. Yeah, yeah, she didn't become Black Widow. You talking about Scarlett Johansson? Really? Yeah, that was her. That was Scarlett Johansson. Shit. <laughs> So much you pay attention to that movie. I was on my phone a lot. But that, I'll admit that, but fuck that movie. I no, I agree. It, it's a horrible movie, and now Bill Murray's absolutely proud of it. So and he won an award. Here's where like Bill Murray just starts making some bad, some weird moves. So next he did Coffee and Cigarettes. If you haven't seen that, his segment is actually pretty fucking great. I've not seen it, no. He's playing himself, and he's working in a diner. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, I don't really remember it enough to go into detail, but it was interesting. Okay. Uh, but then Garfield, though. Garf- he even referenced this in Zombieland, of how much he hated Garfield. Or I don't think he said hated, but... He's regretted. If he's going to say that on another movie, yeah, that means he hated the but role. Do you think he regretted Garfield too? 
why would you sign up for Garfield 2 after 1? <laughs> but after Garfield, he did do Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. Another Wes Anderson movie, but I bet you hated. I've st- I've not watched it. You haven't, ha- you haven't seen this movie? Fuck no, I'm uh, not going to. You know, or fuck me once it's on you, fuck me twice it's on me. Not giving them another chance to fuck me. I'm done. But. No. Alright, so after Life Aquatic, in 2008, he kind of hit it with some small roles that are really under the radar. One is that show, that movie Get Smart. Uh, which one is it? With Steve Carell and. Uh, okay, the, and The Rock? The Rock's in it. And so. Get the fuck out uh, of I used to love Get Smart as a kid. Ah, no doubt. And, I, I can see you liking something stupid. Like and that. a recurring thing was Agent 13. And Agent 13 was always, like, stationed, like, in a tree or in a mailbox. Or he was always just stuck in something and just stationed there to give a, 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 give a, pe- like a piece of information to the Maxwell Smart. And he's like, hey, will you put him in word for, for the chief? Can I get me reassigned? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll see what I can do. And Bill Murray did that in Get the movie. Smart. It was, it was a fun little cameo. And then City of Ember, which is, I would call it the most, the best post the best family friendly post apocalyptic film. There's such thing. City of Ember is. I did always wait for him to be a mayor or a politician. I think he could have played those roles well, but he never took one. So yes, he plays the mayor, and what it is, it's a city like. Earth got fucked up and now lives in a city called Ember Underground. And the, the premise of the movie is they were supposed to, like, at exit, like, the mayor of the town has been giving instructions on when and how to exit the city and go back to the surface when it was ready. Okay. Somewhere over the years, those instructions were lost. He is now the mayor and he has no idea how to exit the city. And he has no idea that the Earth is now viable again. They could all leave, go back, and repopulate Earth. So he just got them living underground. And he's just trying to hold it together as this shitty mayor. And he's a shitty mayor. And he kind of steals the show, too. He's, he's pretty great in it. I'm good. But anyways, then next year, Zombieland. Another little cameo. This is when he's just doing cameos. It was a fun cameo. The Monuments Men. The Monuments Men. You know, I really wanted to like this movie. Like, I was really excited to see it. Oh, him. You got John Goodman. I'm always excited to see John Goodman. Like, I know you don't like him, but the old Cloonster. Ah, oh, fucking Clooney. But you know, it was a fun movie, but wasn't as good as I was hoping for. It wasn't even fun. You know what, Bomb? Why? George Clooney. Not George Clooney, the actor. George Clooney, the director. Really? <laughs> ah. Yes. He sucks on many levels. <laughs> is that what it is? He directed that? He directed that, yes. Oh. Which makes me one of the happiest men in America today that I found that out. I love John Goodman, though. Everybody loves John Goodman. John Goodman. And uh, I've seen an interview with John Goodman and him and Bill Murray. Uh, while Clooney and Damon went off to have drinks every night, they rode bicycles um, that they had rented for them, and they would ride and ride and ride. They'd have to send out search parties because they get lost, huh. and they were scared that uh, Bill Murray just wander into another country and do some fucked up shit. He has been known to do that before. I agree. He in Sweden, he got the whole. Uh, the uh, he was pulled over for suspect suspicion of driving under the influence of a golf cart and a motherfucking golf cart. I, you know what? I kind of applaud that myself. And make it make it go. And it's the premise of stripes. Holy shit! <laughs> you that, are not wrong. That's literally the the second half of the movie is. He go, wanders across a country's borders <laughs> and starts some shit. 100% correct. So, oh, wow. No wonder that, he was so good in stripes. It's that, him. It's him. It's him playing <laughs> him. It's him doing what he does. 
That's wonderful. I'm happy about that. But yeah, George Clooney sucks. Let's move on. I want to talk about this movie. It's when I really finally saw the range that uh, Bill Murray brought to the screen. And the movie is St. Vincent. Love St. Vincent. He plays a drunken Irish vet that just is a fucking asshole. Says what he feels. Don't give a fuck. Owes Bookie. Everything you think of to be that asshole in New Jersey, I believe it was. I believe you're correct. I'm not sure, though. He nailed it. Fucking killed it. Was beside Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy also killed it. Like, all around. Yeah, that movie Great was acting. that movie was wonderful. I, I could... If I'm flipping through... When you get to that point of Netflix, you know, you're about third way through the month. And no, no new shit has hit for another seven days. And you come across that, you're going to click on it every time. That's a great movie. Wonderful movie. And we go up. He was on Parks and Recreation? Eh, just did one episode, I believe. Oh, okay. I'm going to point out he he was in another Wes Anderson movie. Oh, of Grand course. Best Hotel. Which one? Grand Budapest Hotel. Great movie. It can't be a great movie. They're all great. Wes Anderson's director. They're all great. <laughs> they don't have a great cast and he'll miss you. Uh, agree to disagree. Well, we do it every time. Every episode we disagree about mm-hmm. something and you're always wrong. It's amazing. It's weird like that how you're so wrong. <laughs> Uh, Aloha. Was he in Aloha? Apparently. Is that, is that what I'm thinking about? The Aloha, the one where we cast the white woman to play a yeah, Hawaiian, <laughs> Hawaiian woman. Fucking and... Cameron Crow, dude. Bad <laughs> casting, bro. Like, they fucked that up from the start. He, oh, dude. So, Cameron Crow is like one of those directors who was up here. Now, you're like, who the fuck's Cameron Crow? Yeah, I get that. He's like, you remember Almost Famous? I love the. I, I really did enjoy Almost Famous actually. That's amazing. Cameron Crow. Cameron Crow. Like he did do amazing that was movies, re- and then he started doing bullshit, and then <laughs> casting what's her face as a Hawaiian girl. What was her name? She came. She hit. She gone now. She left. She not. Yeah, Emma Stone. Emma Stone. Where? Where's she been at lately? Do I give a fuck about her career anymore? She done one of those 16th century movies and nobody cared. Oh, I definitely <laughs> I don't know why they think that's such a good idea. They do them all the time and they nobody watches them. Nobody. They don't care. Nobody cares. The only one I care about that, even if it's not the same century, would be Robin Hood Ben and Tats. Bring that back. Tats. <laughs> Roaming around the forest oh, for fights. He don't get enough hype either. Carry ooze. 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 I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not sure how to say Ails. it. Ooze. Right. I'm not sure how to say it right. So I just overly say it wrong, <laughs> just so you just know <laughs> I'm not saying it right. Ooze. Like, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I agree. He's a his role in Liar Liar was so underappreciated. So nerdy. One, two, three, and we'll pump for the run. See that? Struck the chat. <laughs> I have something for you. It's the claw. <laughs> You're afraid of the claw. <laughs> yeah, he was great in Days of Thunder, too. Oh, People forget he was the badass in Days of Thunder. Dude, he's, he's a, he actually... Can, Range. He does. Um, Twister? Yeah, he was an he, asshole. Oh, such a douche. <laughs> You still feel a little bad about him getting killed, but like not only you really only felt bad because like the other guys with him got killed with him. Yeah, because he could listen. Yeah, uh, we're like way off. Course yeah, now. we went sideways on that one. Sorry, but Ewes is awesome. Do not disagree. Then we're getting to some voice acting. He does have a voice, a recognizable voice. <laughs> I agree. So he was Baloo in the Jungle Book, the live action 
version. I, don't, I hope you guys can hear the air quotation marks I'm saying <laughs> I'm using when I say that because in live action, it's CG. It, it, it's absolute CGI. It it means or whatever. I don't know if you guys know this, but with these like live action like Disney remakes, they're not live action. They're computer animated. They just look real. You think <laughs> bears talk? Fuck you. I seen Zookeeper. Yes, I do. All right, get the fuck out. Of here. <laughs> no, you're right. These all we're doing is watching voice acting. You know he got paid forty five million dollars to do that voice. I would kill you right now for the same ability. For forty five million. Can somebody call up the country bears and tell them I'm available? Dude, yeah, country trip bear jamboree. I, I mean, for forty five million, fuck yeah, I'm ready to go. Play whatever one you want. I don't even have to be a bear. <laughs> no, I can be a raccoon, squirrel, I don't give a fuck. Whatever. Sign me up. <laughs> Mean dolls, I'll be a squirrel, uh, a snail. Just walking by. Fuck it. Hey guys. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Unbelievable. They're paying them this much to just do voice acting. When's the last time you went to a movie theater and watched a real movie? Real acting. Actually, I'm going to tell you this, and you're going to shit a brick when I tell you this. I might. The dead don't die. <laughs> wow, you plugged Ben Murray in with it. I. You see what I did there? I, I, I did. Okay, so uh, almost opening weekend of The Dead Don't Die, we went and watched the movie um, up in Fairbanks. And I got to tell you, I was pretty amused by the movie. Is that Wes Anderson? Oh, dude, I'm going to have to double check who directed that. Tell me it's I, not Wes Anderson. It's not. I know that for a fact. <laughs> but I don't know who directed it, but it was so fun. Him and Adam Driver. Adam Driver, just no emotion whatsoever. Oh, dude. Just, they were so good together. <laughs> Adam Driver just said, oh, well, maybe you're right. <laughs> How's that feeling about this? <laughs> it was Jim... Jarmush, who wrote and directed. Wrote and directed. Good for him. Yeah, and he... You know, like, I love movies like this. This is totally what you were talking about. Just acting. Acting, yeah. There's some, there's some special effects, but it was all practical special effects mostly. You know, with makeup and whatnot. Yeah. So, you're not relying heavily on CG. Like, you're relying on these actors performing. Yeah, they had to perform in that movie. They did. Great. Selena Gomez. <sighs> Actually, Tom not a bad Waits. role. Tom Waits. Tom Waits. <laughs> right? Steve Buscemi. You got me on now. I, I was good. So then after that, he has another cameo. Ghostbusters. The We're not allowed to talk about that movie. You're not allowed to or you just don't want <laughs> I think it should be a law. <laughs> But I'm not sure. Well, don't worry, because after that, they've already announced the remake with the other guys. I know, they're all mad. All pissed off. Yeah, because they thought they had a franchise on their hands. <laughs> you were just a pit stop on the way to get Bill Murray to sign up for the last hurrah. You know what would have killed it, though? If they got uh, Rick Moranis to make an co- appearance in that movie? I think they could now. His kids are growing up and going to college. And, and even right? he has said, like, he didn't really retire. He just didn't fu- hasn't received any roles he hasn't been interested in. I don't believe that. Yeah. For those of you who don't know Rip Moranis, everybody should know Rip Moranis. If you don't, just hop off my damn channel now. All right. Uh, Rip Moranis' wife died. He came home to take care of the kids. That's why he quit. That's why he disappeared uh, from acting when he was at getting ready to be at the height of his career. He was just starting to star in his yeah, movies. Yeah, he was getting there, yeah. man. He, you know, and I was anxious to see him because some of my favorite movies have him in it. So I hope, I do hope Rick Moranis makes another uh, appearance in Ghost Special 2020. Mac, I heard that uh, our boy had a couple feuds through his career. So, Bill Murray has been known to be a little Difficult to work with. Have some mood swings. In fact, uh, Dan Aykroyd, our boy, has lovingly referred to him as the Murricane because of his reputation of uh, being so difficult. 
Did you know that's actually his nickname on IMDb? The Murricane? Billy the Murricane. No way. <laughs> they got listed there. <laughs> oh my god, that's <laughs> In fact, a friend of his said that he had a reputation. And he said, for what? And he said, a uh, reputation for being difficult to work with. He said, but I only get that reputation for people I didn't like working with or people who didn't know how to work. Or what work was. And they so, call Chevy Chase an asshole. So basically, <laughs> it's not me. It's them. No, no. Fuck them. <laughs> I guess when you're there, you can you can say fuck them. Yeah, when you're Bill Murray, you're Bill Murray, right? So, um, Richard Donner, who is an amazing director, who made some fantastic movies over the years, he directed Scrooge, who we both love. Oh, God, yeah. Scrooge. Um... He stated he's superbly creative, but occasionally difficult. As difficult as any actor. That means Catherine Heigl, ladies and gentlemen. He's as difficult as she is to work with. As far as I'm concerned, she's the worst. <laughs> yeah, you and Seth Rogen. <laughs> I'm always taking Seth Rogen's side. Um, Richard Dreyfus and him have both confirmed that uh, when they were filming What About Bob, they did not get along. All right, I'm taking Rich Draft's side on this because I just want to. Fair enough. Um, in fact, uh, one of the film's producers, Laura Ziskin, uh, recalled Z- having a disagreement with Murray that led to him tossing her into a fucking lake. Shouldn't run at my. He then later threw her. He broke her sunglasses and threw them across a the parking lot. Would you rather you or the sunglasses go across the parking lot? I bet the sunglasses were not cheap. You know, Hollywood types. Anyways. <laughs> uh, Rich bitches. Yeah, I guess Dreyfus said in a 2019 interview, so he's still talking about this shit. Oh, yeah, I, I watched the interview when he gave it, and I was just like, shots fired. Let's go. He said, Everyone hates you. You are tolerated. <laughs> and then threw an ashtray at him. That's what he told Richard Dreyfus. I like it. I like Rich Drafts too. But I think that's one of the reasons that movie played so well is like, because they hate each other's characters. So what, like, so what Bill Murray says on that whole issue was that we were on set. And because What About Bob is the movie we're talking about, people don't understand. Bob, he said, uh, Bill Murray said, I drove him nuts on, on set. And offset, and he encouraged me to drive him nuts offset, and it made for a great picture. I don't believe that one bit. I believe he drove him nuts for the fun of it. Yeah. <laughs> and Richard Dreyfus just was too nice to punch him in the face. I I have to agree with you on that one. Um. Well, as we all know, him and Harold Ramis, bros, total bros, and but. This is the saddest one. Oh, this is the saddest one. I wish it should end on this one. But anyways, here mm. we are. So, they, Harold Ramis directed Groundhog Day, and that was the last time they worked together. After so, all the movies. All, all that stuff. All the appearances. Um, Cordis screenwriter uh, Danny Rubin, they were like two brothers who weren't getting along. And everybody knows brothers could fight worse than anybody. And only a, your true bro... Can you fight with and like stay mad at, like for like twenty years? Yeah, almost. it was like twenty three years, twenty one, twenty three, like somewhere that. around there. It wasn't before a, they talked again. It wasn't until kind of like before, right before Hale Ramis died, that they buried the hatchet. And that's one of the most. That's the saddest part about it. Is at least they did get to there. At least they got there. Yeah. But it would have been nice to see them work. Imagine what we missed out on. Let's yeah. be selfish for a second. <laughs> we, without a doubt, missed out on Ghostbusters 3. Absolutely. Without a doubt, we would have had that in our lives. And we probably missed out on about four or five other projects. Who knows? And I would say three, would, we'd still be talking. We'd be talking about it on this <coughs> podcast right now. Probably. I do believe that. Um, during the making of Charlie's Angels, Lucy Liu allegedly threw punches at him. <laughs> Oh, threw punches at Bill and couldn't connect. I guess uh, uh, Kill Bill didn't help her. 
I'm just saying that, that yeah. I could see him getting under her skin enough. Oh yeah. What did he do? He said he told her, or she said, allegedly he told her that she could not act. <laughs> One thousand six. See him saying that to her. But a bill to him. They it was just an argument, and they have since you know made peace and even nothing, uh. No, never mind. Because nothing Bill's fault. Bill Murray doesn't piss anybody off. Well, the director of Charlie's Angels alleged that uh, Bill Murray headbutted him, but Bill Murray denied ever doing that. No, no. I believe he did. That's just me. But yeah, um, both... And even uh, Sofia Coppola has said that him and Scarlett Johansson didn't seem to get along on the set of uh, uh, Lost in Translation. Well, maybe she should have picked other fucking actors for a stupid fucking film. And uh, Angelica Houston recalled having a feud with him on the set of Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. Shouldn't work for Wes Anderson. I can do this all day long. <laughs> Those are some of his... Feuds. Well, uh, what feuds. about Chevy? We oh. talk about Chevy because I saw an interview with Chevy the the, the I long completely ago. forgot about. He this was one. blowing up the SNL cast. Bill came in right after Chevy leaves. Yep, and so but Bill was still part of that. Uh, he was had that camaraderie with the original cast with Dan Aykroyd and Gilda Radner, which we talked mm-hmm. about because they were on the radio show. Exactly. Chevy Chase came back to SNL as a host. And she started supposedly with Chevy insisting on doing the Weekend Update segment, which he had done previous when he was a cast member. Yeah, because he rocked it for two years. Yep. But at this point, it's already been taken over by Jane Curtis. So Bill was standing up for Jane, kind yep. of thing? And, and Bill later even started doing the Weekend Updates, too. I can see why she, Chevy wanted to be that. Yeah, and you know... It's, but he... Chevy's been... I mean, he's known. Oh, yeah. Completely I mean, for being a fucking ass. There's, I I don't think there's ever been a divide in comedy like there is with Chevy Chase. As far as even the fans who like agree or disagree if Chevy Chase is a douchebag or you know or not. I I believe che- Chevy Chase is a douchebag. I love him. So Chevy Chase. I love is, I love what he does on his job because of what I hear about him. He's like one of those celebrities I never want to meet. No, I want his legacy to stay there. I just want, like, I almost wish I didn't know all the all the other shit. Yeah, that's part of the job, play. True life. So Bill Murray, I was on this adventure to find out what roles that he could have possibly not taken, or turned down, or so some career choices that could have changed cinema history, basically. Oh, it changed a lot. Oh, do tell. He killed his career and gave some leverage and just pushed and, forward to a lot. Keep this in mind. He's still Bill fucking Murray. He's still a cultural phenomenon. He's still an icon. But what exactly did he give up? He passed up on Bad Santa, Monsters, Inc., as John Goodman's character. People versus Larry Flint. It's Woody Harrelson's character. Uh, I'm kind of okay with that one. Splash. He threw the script across the room because he hated it. Congratulations, Tom Hanks. Tom, you're welcome, buddy. Because <laughs> that was when Tom Hanks needed that. He, that was a big role for him. And he said, no. About last night, story here is, while it went to Rob Lowe and Jim Belushi Mm -hmm. and Demi Moore and I can't remember, it was supposed to have went to Bill Murray and Nick Nolte, but apparently they got together and went out one night and decided, fuck no, we could not work with each other. You know, I can see that. (laughs) Uh, The Dead Zone. Pass up on the dead zone. That turned from a movie to a TV show. That was like a big, big thing. Turned down Ted Stryker in airplane. 
what? What? That's a. <laughs> that's, that's an a, iconic pl- uh, that's role. Like that guy's one credit. You you're right. I don't know who plays that role, but <laughs> Bill Murray turned it down. Good for he, that he guy. Can say that. <laughs> I'm not even gonna waste time to look up who that douchebag is. Like fuck him. Oh, we got uh, Shrek. Wait, so when was this in the process? They started in 1991 with so, Steven Spielberg on Shrek. I had heard that Shrek had a very long pre-production. Yeah, and it took so long that Bill Murray bowed out. He was on originally. He passed up on the Witches of Eastwick, which went to Jack Nicholson. And that was a big movie for Jack. Hey, yeah, he had Cher, you had Michelle Pfeiffer. I, but that's one of those ones, again, I, I gotta say, it probably wouldn't have been as good without... It would not have been yeah. as good with Bill Murray in that, because Jack Nicholson killed that role. I can't yeah. wait to talk to Jack Nicholson. <sighs> Boogie Nights. Burt Reynolds' role as a director. I, I mean, again, good. You think good on that? Uh, yeah, you're right. Burt you're Reynolds, right. man! I love Burt Reynolds! <laughs> Who doesn't oh, love Burt Reynolds? Also passed up on Forrest Gump, but then again, who didn't? Even John Travolta <laughs> passed up on that. He's like the one guy who really shouldn't have. He needed that. <laughs> he needed that one. Bad. Uh, I'm so glad he passed up on this one, because it's one of my favorite movies. Gung Ho with Michael Keaton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with the Psalm Motors. He's going to get the car factory running. Yep. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh. Michael Keaton kills it. Anything he's in. Thank you, Bill Murray, for that one. Because I own that. Um, yeah. Kindergarten Cop. You turned that down? What kind of different movie would that be? Wow. Kindergarten Cop for Bill Murray instead of on Schwarzenegger. It's not a tumor. <laughs> What's he going to say there? It's not a tumor. Not a tumor. Stupid. <laughs> I'll throw you across the parking lot now. <laughs> oh, I'm glad he turned that one down. Uh, turn down Rain Man as Tom Cruise's character. Bold move, Cotton. <sighs> uh, still worked out for both of them. I agree. This one's for you, Mac. Okay. And all your Toy Storyans out there. He turned down Buzz Lightyear. Tim Allen banks him on that one. Funny you should say that. He also turned down the Santa Claus. No way. He was the first one approached for the Santa Claus and said no. Okay. First of all, I gotta say, I would actually like that. Oh, I love it. God, are you kidding me? God, I'd watch that movie. (sighs) But B... Tim Allen killed it. I agree. Tim he, Allen. He turned that into a franchise. Well, it turned him into a movie star. I got to agree with you on that one. Before that, he was just Tim Toolman Taylor. Yeah, he's a TV actor waiting on his next sitcom. Yep. And with that, he one fell swoop. He was doing movies. After that, he was doing Joe Somebody, Big Trouble, just a bunch of other movie roles. Movie roles, yeah. yeah. Like, not T. Yeah, so yeah, he definitely... That was a big coup for yeah, him. Yeah, that was big for him. And the one that he turned down that he most regrets. Ooh. Are you ready for this one? No. I don't think you are. Because I wouldn't have guessed it. Okay. Who framed Roger Rabbit? For the Bob Hoskins character? Yes. I'm glad he didn't get it. Me or, too. Yeah, Bob Hoskins. Oh, man. But I'm just saying. And here's the kicker on all this. At some point, Bill Murray decided he didn't need a publicist because they were calling him too much. He set up a 1-800 number for people to call with their scripts. And if he decided to check them, which is very rarely, he would listen... And if he liked one, he would send you a message to fax it to his local uh, copy store. He would pick it up and let you know. 
That's why he missed out on a lot of these, because they could not get a hold of his ass. That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> well, Bill, hope you learned from that. He still got that to this day. In 2016, 16, 17, someone, I seen an interview. Here's your know. He still had a Blackberry. In when? 2017. It still worked? Yeah. Because he said, all I need to do is to text my children. Because I can use a regular phone if they don't want to talk. They always want to text so it doesn't look like they're talking to their parents. Other than that, I don't need a phone. And he's huh. right. He's old school. I can see that. He's just old school. Hundred huh. percent right. So he turned in all those roles. Imagine a mother. I mean, even the, if even if they bombed, you just imagine how different they'd be. Those, mo- <sighs> yeah, the Santa Claus we know. I mean, uh, they would have been totally different. Santa Claus, kindergarten cop, gung ho. Would be huge different. Forrest Gump. I was curious on that one. You know, this is why we need access to alternate dimensions so that we can see these movies. <laughs> like, what if John Travolta was Forrest Gump, or what if Bill Murray was Forrest Gump? Calm down, in game. <laughs> I'm sure Captain America seen it all. <laughs> uh, Bad Santa. I would love to see how far he'd went on that. Because Billy Bob Thornton went all the way. All the way. I mean, he went... Mm, that is a raunchy movie Super. done in a good way. Would Bill Murray have been able to do that? Because I've never seen him do that. I agree. I don't think he would have got as far. I, and that's what made Bad Santa Bad Santa. That's why we wanted to watch it yeah. again. Because went that, they went I mean, that far with her. Like... Billy Bob Thornton can sit there eating ice cream, watching girls, and yeah, it's funny and creepy, but it's not like too creepy. Bill yeah. Murray doing it would have been like too creepy. Just to get over the edge and done. Um, you expect it from Billy Bob Thornton? <laughs> that was saying. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, we expect this behavior from you, Billy. That's fun. How do you go from Bad Santa to doing Shrek? Ooh, don't. that's a leap. <laughs> you don't. That's why he made the choices he made. All right, it's time for this segment. Everybody loves Max Facts. Max Facts. So, I'm going to go ahead and start it out with, um, I don't know if you knew this, but Bill's not super nice dude. Well, I kind of gathered that a little bit, but I don't know how asshole he is. You gonna drag me down right here, aren't you? Yeah, buddy. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and just like these facts. I'm just gonna go ahead with the dark stuff first. Try to bring sunshine and rainbows afterwards. Be great. So, when his wife divorced him in 2008, she accused Murray of domestic violence, infidelity, addiction to sex, marijuana, and alcohol. And that. I've heard many reports of domestic violence reports. Oh, let's go with domestic violence. Yes, I can see that. He's had history of I mean, we've already established he's um, a hothead. Yeah, it drugs. Is. Yeah. Alcohol. Alcohol, yeah. absolutely. Infidelity and sex addiction. Kind of ain't that the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Sure, why not? They're in Hollywood. You're free to be who you want to be. So, going to that, he he does have um, children, like you mentioned. He has six sons. Is it six? Six. I thought sons. it was four for some reason. He has six. Luke, Homer, Jackson, Cooper, Lincoln, and Cal. I feel bad for Homer. You I, named the kid Homer. You know the funny thing is, like, when he's looking at these pictures, he's the one who looks most like him. <laughs> Because he's a homer. He's a homer. <laughs> well, that just played nicely. <laughs> um, Bill Murray owns a baseball team. He co-owns uh, the Charleston River Dogs, a Class A minor league team in the South Atlantic League. 
And I guess they're affiliated with the uh, New York Yankees. Which we all hate. We do kind of all hate, though. Yeah, they think. We like Yankees. You're a... What's that word I'm looking for? Douchebag. Hi, oh, this. Yeah. So him and his brothers co-own a restaurant together in Jacksonville, Florida. You're waiting for me to ask. What's it called, Mac? Caddyshack. Oh, nice. Where's it at? Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, it's not in New Orlando? Is it New Orlando? Actually, it's in St. Augustine. So, it's like the north northeast. Mm. And actually, I'm glad it's in St. In St. Augustine and not Jacksonville. Because Jacksonville is so gross. <laughs> is that where you're going with it? Well, I mean, like, Jacksonville is where uh, Lip Biscuit's from, so. It, mm, yeah, I yeah, get that. Yeah, I, I only go out of Fort Lauderdale to the port and then sail off yeah, on my cruise. As soon as you hear <laughs> that they're from that town, you're like, I, well, I never go to Jacksonville. Jacksonville's done. That's a city I'll never go to now. You're right. Oh, God. As you know, he's an avid golfer. Yes. In fact, Absolutely. I don't know if you remember this. Him and his, his brothers had a, a show on Comedy Central about golf back in the day. Well, here's what I know about that little bit. Keep that in your mind real quick. He grew up. How he, he made his money and most of his brothers made his money is from being a caddy at their local golf course. That's how they got to pay for college and stuff. Oh, okay. So that's why they're so into golf. They worked on the golf courses. Okay. Cool. So, yeah, like I said, he did a show with his brothers, um, Brian Murray, Joel Murray, and John Murray. You know, I like them all in different roles. Uh, well, if you're a Brian Doyle Murray and uh, Yester. Brian Doyle Murray is a very accomplished actor, if you guys are unaware. Uh, yeah. yeah. Give him a Google. You're going to see, you realize you've seen him in a bunch of movies. He's on IMDb. A bunch of TV shows. Yeah. He is just as accomplished. I can't believe, I remember if it's John or Joel that was in uh, One One Crazy Summer and those kind of movies back with John Cusack. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest, the only one I really know is Brian. Yeah, there's a Joel and John. and yeah. I, do, I remember them from the show because I remember there was four of them. Yeah. But I Brian is the only one I remember from his movies. Or in his own TV shows and old work. I get that. I mean, they don't have a name. Jo- Bill's got the name locked up. So here's one for you. He was considered for the role of Willy Wonka in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Ooh, did not have... Oh, because he didn't turn out. Uh, I would... Would not, was that Gene Wilder or no, that was the Johnny, Johnny Depp. Depp? Yeah, I wouldn't like it. It's so weird, him and Johnny Depp, like right there with roles again, with like Hunter S. Thompson and then Will Hunter Depp. S. Thompson. Will, yeah, actually, that's kind of funny. Yeah, I didn't think of that. I, I didn't think either one of them did good. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about movies that didn't do the remake. Jane Wilder killed it. It was done after that. So, Murray is one of only three American actors who were nominated for an Oscar for a movie set in Japan. Awesome translation. That's the time when he went outside and just ended it all because he just guessed that. <laughs> uh, he shares uh, with Marlon Brando and red buttons for the. For he should not be in the same sentence as Marlon Brando. I'm sorry, he's a comedic genius, but he is not an acting genius. Two different things do not need to be in the same breath with Marlon Brando. Sorry, I have I'm, another role that he regrets turning down. I feel like you're trying to piss me off at this point. Am I gonna be pissed off when he says? I don't even I don't know how you feel about this movie. Alright, let's go. Steve Carell's role in Little Miss Sunshine. Well, uh, anything that Steve Carell is not part of, I'm pretty happy about. You don't like Steve Carell? I do not like Steve Carell. Uh he has moments. Um 
The Office was not for me. It's a dry humor. and I can accept that it probably was a great show, but it's not for me. Mm-hmm. So, I can accept that a movie role that he takes is just not for me. There are some times he pulls it out, though. And uh, when his secondary character, mostly on Anchorman, he crapped me up on Anchorman, actually. And I don't mind Evan Almighty. Yeah. Yeah, don't mind it. I'll sit and watch it if somebody wants to watch it. But Steve Carell on the whole... No, I'm not Steve Carell. Fair enough. I'm going to credit what credit is due. The big short, Steve Carell killed that. I love that movie. It's really good. Uh, you're going to like this one. Marie's a big fan of Chicago professional sports teams. I know he's a Cubs fan. He's a Cubs fan, he's a Bear fan, and he's a Bulls fan. And he was even a guest color commentator for a Cubs game back in the 80s. I watched him sing uh, Take Me Out the Ball Game on the same thing stretch. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing something. Here's one for you. Jeremy's facts. Okay. Uh, during 2003 uh, MLB playoff run, the Cubs were playing and all that. He was in Europe on set. And his contract stated if the Cubs were in the playoffs, he had to have a satellite feed of all the games during filming and when he's backstage. Wow, that's crazy. Good for him. That's the way I would be if I was an actor trying to to see my favorite sports team actually find a win because they've won 103 years. Yeah. Wow, fucking awesome. So his first wife, Megan Kelly, he married... In Las Vegas on Super Bowl Sunday of 1981. As long as it wasn't a long ceremony and a long reception and they were able to see the game, I'm fucking for this. <laughs> Get it fucking done before the game starts and let's watch some football. Good for him, man. He knows what's up. He's a party man. Bill Murray. Oh, what can you so say? Love him or hate him. Um, there's definitely a few of his ex-wives that hate him. <laughs> uh, but we love him. A few. Um, I love his acting. Um, I love his comedy. I don't love his personal life. I, you know, and I don't think we touched about this yet. Um, how he interacts with people in public. Yeah, I got a big problem with uh, the way Bill Murray gets attacked first of all when he goes out it, look people these people they're celebrities but they're human beings uh, they do a job we watch it I've never been starstruck over oh I'm look at him let's take selfies and I think it's evolved into the fact that people used to just take pictures and now they're trying to take selfies in front of the celebrity they're just doing their job the same way we do our jobs every day. Just they get paid more and you see their job on film. I agree. So, just stop that. Stop being in awe of these people. They're not greater than you just because they make films and do this and that. You're still probably a better human being than them. To quote Tom Hanks in the Simpsons movie, If you see me in public, please leave me be. I agree with that. Let, these pe- let them do what they got to do. The one problem with Bill Murray is he wants to crash other people's shit. Bill, if you listen, babe, you have to stop stopping into weddings and bachelor parties and 21st birthdays and doing all this stuff if you do not want it to happen to you. Yeah, they're all fine and dandy when you show up. Of course they're going to be. You're Bill Murray. But don't be a hypocrite about it. Don't get mad when somebody takes your picture at the airport when you crash their party at a bar and stay in all their pictures. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I think he needs to find a line in that. You can't be both sides of that. What do you think, man? I have to agree with you on that one. You know, it's one thing when you're invading privacy and you're having your privacy invaded. And I understand a celebrity probably is pretty shitty. But that doesn't give you the right to do that to other people just because you're famous and they might like it. Like, hey, Bill Murray, fuck yeah, call it. Like, don't. 
throw your dick around like that. That's douchey. That's just yeah. douchey. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It, it's, if you don't want to have to, you don't do it to other people. Exactly. Just man up and say, yeah. get, get the fuck away. I would be on Bill Murray's side way more if he didn't. He profits off that. He does. Which he, is he my He gets a issue. lot of notoriety and fame. for that. He has like a little bit of internet fame for people just running into him and telling people about it. Yeah, and him stopping in and doing the, the, yeah. I saw him signing autographs out of a hotel, which I have no problem with. Sure. By the way. He said twenty dollars. Twenty dollars for autograph. And they're pulling out their money and and the way I figured if you're out there trying to get Bill Murray's autograph and you're not at a job, you got money enough to mm. pay twenty dollars. Totally respect that. Have no problem with it. If somebody come up to me and I said twenty dollars, they probably punch me in the face because that's never going to happen. But the point is that one guy came up with three dollars and he told him go get a job and come back. That's where Bill Murray's asshole is just kind of just expands. It kind of just that should not happen. Bill Murray, great actor. Questionable man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Love his films. Some of them? For the most part. I feel like his filmography does not speak to me, but when he does, he knocks that apart. You know, I'd have to say, I do have to say, his filmography speaks to you a lot more if you like Wes Anderson films. Wes Anderson sucks dicks. Which is. Whatever. Wes Anderson sucks. Let me go with that one. Uh, Wes Anderson just does He reaches a certain demographic and lets it go. Fair enough. It's not your not coming to you. Um, Bill Murray, uh, I've not seen any charities he gives to. He's not a giver. <laughs> nah, he's not. Which kind of makes him more of an asshole. Yeah. But, uh, it's hard to hate him. It's hard to really hate his ass. Let's not look at it too closely. I think we've looked at this way too closely already. Uh, so this is where we're going to leave you guys. Hope you had a great time listening to me and... Mac. 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 <laughs> I hope to see you guys back in next week when we're talking about Mac. We're going to go in to Marvel history here, folks. If you haven't seen Endgame, see it. We're getting ready to ruin your childhood. That's right. We're going to talk about our guy, Robert Downey Jr. Boom! That's happening. Not Robert Downey Sr. No. (laughs) Junior. Yeah, that's right, guys. It's been a great time sitting with you guys. I'm Jeremy. Looking good. I'm Mac. Feeling good. See you next